Following the Apollo 11 mission, in which the United States finally put a man on the moon, NASA scientists now had a whole array of studies and experiments to perform on the lunar surface. During some of the subsequent missions, astronauts played golf or drove a rover on the surface, but the members of Apollo 14, 16, and 17 also had a one-of-a-kind device to conduct a particular series of tests. The Apollo Lunar Surface Experiments package consisted of an array of scientific instruments to be used by the astronaut crews, and one of them was a space mortar to blow up the lunar surface with grenades. The objective of this active seismic experiment was to make use of these explosives to explore the subsurface moon structure, but the process came with several shortcomings given to the still unknown lunar phenomena, prompting the astronauts and engineers back home to get creative. The Eagle has landed. According to NASA, the primary goal of Apollo 11 was to complete the national plan set by President John F. Kennedy on May 25, 1961, to put a man on the moon and return him safely back to Earth. Secondary objectives included, quote, scientific exploration by the lunar module, or LM, crew, deployment of a television camera to transmit signals to Earth, and deployment of a solar wind composition experiment, seismic experiment package, and a laser-ranging retroreflector. During the exploration, the two astronauts were to gather samples of lunar surface materials for return to Earth. Additionally, the astronauts were also going to extensively photograph the lunar terrain, the deployed scientific equipment, their spacecraft, and each other. Apollo 11 launched on July 16, 1969, with a crew that would pass down in history as American and international heroes, as the feat by Commander Neil Armstrong, Command Module Pilot Michael Collins, and Lunar Module Pilot Edwin Buzz Aldrin would be watched by over 650 million people. On July 20th, the world was captivated by Armstrong's words when he set foot on the moon and said, quote, That's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. Although Kennedy did not live to see the achievement, a stranger left some flowers and a note on his grave hours after Apollo 11 landed on the moon. It read, quote, Mr. President, the eagle has landed. Active Seismic Experiment Just as Apollo 11 did before them, the astronauts from the following missions would end up conducting all sorts of experiments to provide scientists with enough data for additional research. The astronauts collected samples of soil and rocks, measured seismic data, measured the lunar surface, and even carried on with Galileo's hammer and feather experiment. Aside from their geological objectives, the astronauts also drove cars, planted flags, hit golf balls, and threw live grenades through specially designed space mortars in the name of science. Indeed, a one-of-a-kind mortar complete with explosives was designed by NASA engineers to use on the moon, but not in the way one would expect. During the Apollo 11 mission, Armstrong and Aldrin deployed the seismic experiment package. This unique array of assets would become the precursor of the active seismic experiment that crews from other Apollo missions would conduct in the future. The explosives and mortars had a strictly scientific purpose, despite subsequent theories that would argue that they were used to test military defenses against a possible alien or Soviet moon invasion. NASA claims that the Active Seismic Experiment, or ACE package, was designed to, quote, generate and monitor seismic waves for the study of the lunar near-surface structure. Several seismic energy sources are used. An astronaut-activated thumper device, a motor package that contains rocket-launched grenades, and the impulse produced by the lunar module ascent. In other words, the purpose of the Active Seismic Experiment was to acquire data to determine the physical properties of the lunar surface and subsurface materials. To determine the structure of the upper kilometer of the lunar crust, NASA astronauts had to detonate small controlled explosives on the lunar surface and measure how seismic waves traveled through and across the ground. While the Earth is almost seismically active, the Moon is not. It is seismically quiet most of the time, complicating gathering data about its inner structure. Most of what scientists know from the layers of the Earth has been through seismic waves, including the way the crust, mantle, and core react to them while moving through the planet. Thus, the Earth's interior structure is determined by measuring changes in the expected arrival time of the waves. This process is called seismic tomography, and the information can be gathered in two ways. One is called passive seismic, which is done by setting up seismometers that record seismic wave information from distant earthquakes. The other is through an active seismic procedure. In the latter, scientists create seismic waves by thumping or dropping heavy weights on the ground or setting off explosions in the ground or water. As the environment on the moon was basically silent, the seismometers on the lunar surface did not detect much activity, and NASA resorted to a more drastic option, detonating explosives. Apollo Findings 
The seismometers set up on the moon could not see or detect any dramatic so-called moonquakes. While Earth has multiple M5 earthquakes per week, only three of them were detected by NASA in over five years. Still, the devices allowed geologists back on Earth to map out a chunk of the moon's interior, but they needed the help of active seismic procedures for more thorough research. The crew from Apollo 14 arrived at the moon with the first seismic experiment package. It comprised the specially designed mortar, geophones, and 22 explosive thumper charges. The mortar device was able to launch the grenades up to 1.5 kilometers away, and although it was activated by the astronauts, the mortar could only be fired by NASA Radio Command back on Earth. The astronauts successfully fired 13 of the 22 thumper charges, and the misfires were attributed to dirt acclimation in the firing switch. Still, they served their purpose, and the effect of the waves was picked up by the seismometers. Unfortunately, the astronauts were not able to fire the mortar for fear of damaging other equipment. NASA attempted to fire them after the crew left, to no avail. Those explosives remain on the moon to this day. The task to fire the mortar was subsequently given to the crew of Apollo 16, which managed to fire three grenades at a distance of some 900 meters. The mortar rounds were fired over an array of strategically placed geophones that recorded the blasts and the seismic waves generated by the impacts. However, the pitch sensor went off, and the fourth round was never fired, as the astronauts believed it was a grenade that damaged a ranging wire. Apollo 17 shook things up in the process to gather lunar data more effectively. The astronauts, including geologist Harrison Schmidt, placed the explosives three and a half kilometers away from the lander, and the charges were then set off by a thermal timer after the pin was pulled. Both natural and artificially produced seismic waves were monitored. The artificial waves were produced by shotgun-like charges fired by an astronaut-operated thumper device and by explosive grenade charges fired from a mortar box assembly. The explosives detonated after Apollo 17 left the moon, and NASA concluded that the basalt layer near Apollo 17's landing site was 1.4 kilometers thick. Scientists also discovered that the seismic velocity was between 0.1 and 0.3 kilometers per second in the upper few hundred meters of the crust at all three landing sites. NASA observed that such velocities are much lower than those of intact rock on Earth, but are consistent with a fractured material produced by the prolonged meteoric bombardment of the Moon. No more research attempts of this nature have been attempted since Apollo 17, but much of the data gathered during those pivotal and historic missions continues to be used today. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of these unique assets that the Apollo crews used during their missions to the moon.